Good day, everyone. Today is our third lesson, and our topic is about validity and reliability. <clears throat> At the end of the lesson, you will identify terms related to validity and reliability. You analyze concept, principles, and procedures, ensuring the validity and reliability. You will also examine the sources of validity and reliability evidences. Validity is the quality of a test which measures what it is supposed to measure. It is the degree to which evidence, common sense, or theory supports any interpretations or conclusions about a student based on his or her test performance. Re reliability tests which produces scores that are not affected much by chance. Students sometimes randomly miss a question they really knew the answer to or sometimes get an answer correct just by guessing. Teachers can sometimes make an error score inconsistently with subjectively scored tests. In making references from the results of a selection procedures to the subsequent work behavior, or outcome performance should be based on evidences that to support the said inferences. The following are the sources of validity. Content-related evidence, criterion-related evidence, construct-related evidence. Content-related evidence it refers to the extent to which the test covers the entire content domain. Phase validity is possessed by a test to adequately measure the learning outcomes and content. It is based on opinion of the reviewing, it which is subjective and it is considered as non-scientific or non-systematic. For instance, if a grade um, 11 student was able to uh, answer correctly 85% uh, of the items in science uh, test about matter, the teacher may conclude that the student knows 85% of the content area. Criterion related evidence. The degree to which the test scores agree to external criterion. Criterion related evidence is related to external validity. Three types of criteria, achievement test scores, grade, ratings, and other numerical career data. A summative of entrepreneurship can be compared to the periodical test results through correlation. According to the same source, criterion evidence is of two types, and these are the following, concurrent validity and predictive validity. Concurrent is an estimate of a current performance of students' relation to previously validated or established measures is pro provided by this type. Uh, predictive validity, it pertains to the usefulness and power of test scores to predict future performance. Construct related evidence. Let's start with the term construct. In establishing construct validity, two methods may be used, and these are the following. Convergent validation and divergent validation. Convergent, it occurs when measures or construct which are related are in fact to be related. While divergent validation, a discriminant, it occurs when unrelated construct are in reality observed not to be. Six distinct construct validity aspects were presented and these are the content. Content is, is the parallel to content related evidence which calls for content relevance and representativeness. Substantive it refers to theoretical construct and empirical evidences. The generalization is the context and task are examined. This is called external validity. A structural, it is how well the scoring 
structure matches the construct domain, this being assessed in this aspect. External is the convergent and discriminant. Evidences taken from multi-treat, multi-method studies are included in this aspect. Consequential, uh, it is deal with attended and unattended assessment effects on teaching and learning. Assessment method validity. So developing performance assessment, um, the three steps are involved and these are the following. Defining the purpose, choosing the activity, developing criteria for scoring. Defining the purpose here, it involves essential skills students need to develop and the content worthy of understanding. Choosing the activity, developing the valued activity, the performance assessment, the goals and objective assessment, perf uh, performance assessment. Developing criteria for scoring. It is a rubric rating scale, has to be created in scoring. Oral question has high validity in controlled conditions. For observations, uh, the behavior of interest should be accurately described by the operational and response definitions. Direct assessment methods should be combined with indirect methods like interviews, survey, and focus groups. How can you ensure your assessment provide accurate, accurate feedback? So what's the best way to assess the student? According to Association for Middle Level Education, um, a process which will ensure the utilization of valid, effective, and demanding, and demanding assessment for students is composed of the following steps. Knowledge, reasoning, performance skills, and products. Deconstructing, deconstruct the standards. Deconstructing a standard involves breaking the standard into numerous learning targets, then aligning each of the learning targets to varying levels of achievement. After which, deconstruct each standard, it involves breaking the said standard into different learning targets and aligning each of the said learning. Targets to varying achievement levels. So knowledge, it's focusing on um, knowing and understanding, such as vocabulary, synthetic structures, numbers, numeration systems. Reasoning, it's using knowledge and understanding to solve problems and interpret information. Performance skills, processing, tuning knowledge into action. Uh, products, it's creating, it's a tangible product that represent the application of the content. For example, a science fair project or a creative writing piece. Align items and levels of thinking. <clears throat> this assessment, hmm, Maybe um, traditional paper, uh, paper pencil test with multiple, ch multiple choice questions, matching and short answer items, or perhaps a performance-based assessment, such as a project or lab. Regardless, the assessment must align with the learning targets derived from the standard. Okay, some of the um, reasons for testing are to monitor the progress of students, so as for a teacher to adjust the course pace, um, create valid, reliable assessment. To promote both validity and reliability in an assessment, use specific guidelines for each traditional assessment item. For example, multiple choice or matching. So to motivate students, um, Provide data for students and grade challenge students to apply concept learned, um, design or construct test items, items, utilize consistent language, help students prepare. 
So this are the these are the general guidance. Step four: Take items to the next level with rigor and relevance. With rigorous assessment, um, think accurately and with clarity. Identify and consider multiple meanings. Engage in disciplined inquiry and thought. Work outside the norm. Transfer knowledge to various situations. Adjust approach when thrown a curve ball. Tolerate uncertainty and persevere. Okay, ensuring relevance means students can make a connection to their lives. The assessment are interdisciplinary, contextual, and authentic. Examples include authentic problem-solving tasks, simulations, and service learning projects. Okay, so we are now in step five. Make assessment part of planning. To assess effectively, it is important to think about assessment prior to creating lesson plans. For the summative end of unit assessment, consider what you want your students to know and be able to do. Then plan lessons with this knowledge and these skills in mind. By doing so, you can ensure you are engaging students in learning activities that lead them to success on the summative assessments, deconstructing standards, and drafting assessment items facilitates these outcomes. In addition to summative assessment, it's important to formatively assess students with instruct, uh, instructional unit so they don't get lost along the way. Threats to validity. The following are the um, defects in the uh, construction of assessment task which can make assessment inference um, inaccurate. Interator, test, retest, parallel forms, split half. Okay, so the Cronbach alpha, it is the mean possible split half combination or the average. When a test is split again the itself, it can be calculated by teachers using Excel or any other statistical software package. Okay, so Sources of reliability evidence. In terms of sources of reliability uh, um, over time, it supports it support that there is no considerable change in the construct between the first, second testing. Evidence based on stability. Evidence based on equivalent forms. Evidence on internal consistency. Evidence based on consistency. So, in number one, the retest reliability is used to determine the test result stability over time. In number two, its equivalent forms are ideal, which will utilize a pre and post test as well as for makeup test. Number three, Evidence on internal consistency, it signifies that a student has the mastery learning. And the last is evidence based on decision consistency. It is a decision consistency displays how consistent the classification are. Okay, so. Developing a reliable student assessment center for teaching learning provided uh, suggestions and recommendations on how to um, increase reliability of the different methods of assessment. So these are the methods of you know, increasing the uh, Reliability and validity, essay or performance-based assessments, 
Um, from here, you can design a rubric, grade item by item, grade anonymously, train evaluators. And also you can multiple, you can use multiple choice tests or the Likert type items. So that's my lesson for today. I hope you learned something from this lesson. A good day and uh, see you next week. Thank you.